Hello, my name is Christian Alpenman and today I'm going to explain how to build your first project in Sensor Music you see in Hollyhock. If you're using Yazine for the first time, you have of course to configure the audio and MIDI settings. Therefore, we go to the setup panel, which can be found on the start page right here or on the workspace down here. First, we go to the audio tab. Here you can adjust the usual audio settings like driver, interface and sample rate. Next, you find a list with the available audio inputs and outputs your hardware is capable of. To use them inside Yuzin, you have to check the boxes to the right. As you see in the main bar, a corresponding peak meter is added for each activated I.O. Next, we take a look at the MIDI settings. Here you find a list of the available MIDI devices. Like in the audio settings, check the boxes to activate them. If you plug in a device while Yuzin is running, you can simply click Rescan Devices and it will show up. Let's once go back to the Global tab. Here you can set a path for a personal sound folder, where you can for example put your own samples, sounds and loops, independent from Yuzin's own folders. Down here you set an individual folder for audio recorded internally using direct to disk And of course you can select your favorite sample editor for quick access from inside your zine. Till now we just configured which of your audio and MIDI hardware is available inside your zine. To make it usable in a project and to fit your individual needs, we have to make additional configurations in the Devices panel which can be found here on the workspace. Here you find some pre-configured devices which fit the standard needs for a quick start like two mono inputs, stereo in and out and two surround outputs. Let's take a closer look at the stereo out device by double clicking it. There you see that a device is nothing else than a regular Yuzin patch. You have your audio device and the IOs that can be connected to from inside a project as modules. Now you might need other connections, for example you might want to send a signal to a stage monitor. Therefore we go to the menu bar on the left where you can add several different types of devices. In this case we choose an audio output. To avoid confusion, you can select an individual color for the device. Simply select it and choose a color from the palette in the menu bar on the left. Renaming the device is done by alt-clicking it. Now we have to configure the new device, so it uses the wanted outputs of the interface. Delete the connections to your zine by selecting them and simply hit delete on your keyboard. Now you click on the inlet of your wanted hardware output, in this case analog 1, and draw a wire into the space. Releasing the mouse button opens a dialog with several options. In this case we use the audio input. As mentioned before, all IOs your hardware is capable of are visible here. But only the ones activated in the setup will pass your signals. So in this case we have to go back to the audio tab and activate the analog 1 output. Now we are ready to build our first project. Let's start with a simple live input for a guitar. In Yuzin, all the signal flow is organized in racks. To create one, click on the empty workspace to open the menu and choose New Rack. Now we have to select an input for this rack. Go back to the Devices panel and drag your input device on the input section of the rack. If you want to add audio effects, open the browser, search the library for ready-to-use audio effect patches provided by Yuzin and simply drag and drop your choice into the patch field of the rack. Finally, you have to turn on the audio engine and start playing. Yuzin racks are generic types. They do what you want them to do. If you need to play a MIDI instrument, you do it in the same way we did with the audio live input. Create a new rack and select your desired MIDI input from the Devices panel. To check if the MIDI input is connected properly, hit a key on the keyboard. In the main bar, you see the blue MIDI meter, which indicates that Yuzin receives MIDI input from the interface. 
Another MIDI meter is located in the input device in the rack. To check the MIDI signal in this place, you have to turn on the main engine. Now we want to play a MIDI instrument. Similar to VST instruments and like we did with the audio effect, select a MIDI instrument, for example a guitar bank file from the browser and drag it into the patch field. Maybe you want to use auxiliary effects instead of inserts. Like you already know, create a new rack and select a reverb from the library. To make the routing, drag and drop the destination rack into the output of the source rack. Opening the send module by clicking on the arrow shows you the usual options like mute, solo and the pre-fader switch. And of course you can adjust the send level. The send level can also be set in the input of the destination rack. As you see both faders move together. In Usine, signals can be sent to multiple outputs in a very easy way. Think of the stage monitor we created in the beginning. Open the Devices panel and drag it into the output of the wanted rack. That's all. Like the internal send module for the auxiliary, you have the same output controls. Clicking the green play arrow disables the output. To delete it, simply drag it into the trash. Both options are a standard using behavior you'll find in many places. If you have found unique sounding settings for your effect, you can store them as presets. Therefore, just open the preset list at the bottom of the effect. Here you can store a new preset. To overwrite an existing one, click Rewrite and then select the preset you want to replace. Renaming presets is done by alt-clicking it, like we are used to. Changing the color is done in the palette on the left. If you cannot find your desired color, click more to select one without limitations. Like with preset names, you can change the name of a parameter with a simple alt-click. Changing values can be done by moving sliders with the mouse or, if you want to enter it manually, by triple clicking it. Resetting a value is done with a simple control click. You can even change the color of a slider or even the whole patch. Just select it and choose your preferred color in the palette. To save your day's work, click somewhere on the workspace to open the menu on the left and click Save Workspace. If your audio files are spread on many different locations of your computer, you can use the Export Workspace option. This one saves the whole workspace including all samples used in it in a new folder. So you can take this one for example to another computer without any sounds and files missing. <laughs> 